Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at uh, proportion problems. We're going to go over the definition of a proportion and how to solve for an unknown within a proportion. And then I've got four sample word problems that have to do with proportions that we're going to go over and explain. Let's take a look. Okay, so what is a proportion? Proportion is just two ratios or fractions uh, that are equal to each other. So three fifths equals nine over 15. That's a proportion, two fractions are equal. You can see that the fraction on the right is just three times on the numerator and three times on the denominator. So what's an example of a proportion? Well, if we have a length of chain, we've got this big heavy chain, um, it's gonna be proportional to its weight. So if we had three feet of the chain, it might weigh 11 pounds. So if we had six feet of the chain, then it would weigh 22 pounds. And if you see that proportion, three over 11 equals six over 22. So now solving proportion, we can notice that in back in that proportion, three fifths equals nine over 15, the two diagonals are gonna multiply to the same thing when you've got a proportion. So the three times the 15, and the five times the nine are both gonna equal 45. We're essentially putting it over a common denominator and that's why this works. So the three times the 15 and the nine times the five, the two diagonals are always gonna be equal when two fractions are set equal to each other. So we can use that to solve for an unknown. So if we've got six over 15 equals X over 10, we can cross multiply the six times the 10 and the 15 times the x and set them equal to each other. So 60 is gonna equal 15x. Divide both sides by 15 to solve for x, and we get x equals four. Now when we're looking at word problems, uh, it helps to use labels so that we know that we get the right thing in the numerator and the right thing in the denominator. So in this simple example here, we've got three pounds of chocolate that cost $18. How much would it cost for seven pounds? So I'm gonna go ahead and put the pounds in the numerator and the cost in the denominator. Now it doesn't matter which way you do it, uh, but it does matter that you're consistent. So I like to write the labels right out, pounds and cost, so that when I set up my proportion, I know to put three in the numerator because that's where I'm putting pounds, and 18 is my cost, so that goes in the denominator. And that's set equal to seven in the numerator because that's how many pounds, and we don't know the cost. So that's where our, our cost is gonna go in the denominator. So it really helps to write out um, the, what are you gonna put in the numerator in the denominator so that you don't um, confuse them and you can keep them consistent. Then from there, we can just cross multiply. Three times X equals 18 times seven. So we get three X equals 126. Divide by three to get our final answer. And that's gonna be 42. Okay, let's take a look at these four proportion problems. The first problem says if five inches on a map represents seven and a half miles, what distance does 12 inches on the map represent? So in setting up a proportion, let's put the labels, let's put the length on the map in the numerator, and then the actual in the denominator. And again, putting these labels will make sure that we've got the numerator and denominator right on both sides of the proportion. So five inches on the map represents 7.5 inches in actual miles. And that's gonna be set equal to 12 inches on the map. And how much does that represent? So X. And then we're gonna cross multiply. Five X, five times X equals 12 times seven and a half. 12 times seven and a half gets us 90. Divide both sides by five and get X equals 18. Okay, second problem. A turtle can travel 15 feet in nine minutes. How long would it take the turtle to travel 10 feet? Again, what are we gonna put? We're gonna put feet in the numerator and minutes 
and I'm just choosing to do it this way. You can do it either way as long as you're consistent. You can do minutes over feet if you want to. As long as you're consistent with both sides of the proportion, it'll work out. So 15 feet in nine minutes, and we're gonna set that equal to 10 feet and an unknown. So 15 X, 15 times X equals nine times 10 or 90. Divide both sides by 15 and we get X equals six. So it would take him six minutes to travel 10 feet. All right, third problem, the property tax on a house valued at $150,000 is $2,100. At this same tax rate, what is a house valued at if the tax is $2,800? So let's set up our proportion. Let's put the value of the house on the top and let's put the tax on the bottom. So then $150,000 over the tax for that one is 2100 and that's set equal to we don't know the value that's what we're trying to find so that's where our unknown is but we do know the tax is 2800 so when we cross multiply we're going to get 2100 times x that's this way and then 150,000 times 2800 is going to get us 420 million divide both sides by 2100 and you're going to get x equals 200,000 so the value of the house that's paying tax of 2800 is going to be 200,000 now let me show you a shortcut you could do here so when you have a proportion and only in proportion only when they're set equal to each other we can cancel or reduce in any of these directions. So you can reduce here, 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 and here. So to make the math easier, we could have seen that both 2100 and 2800 are vo both divisible by 700. So we could actually reduce this into three and four. Right? It just makes it a lot easier. And you can actually reduce this way too. You can see, oh, three goes into 150,000. 50,000 times, and then four times 50,000, we just get one X equals 200,000. So again, you can reduce around the edges only in a proportion, so don't get confused and do that uh, when you're, you have other operations with fractions, but when you have two equal to each other, you can reduce the two numbers on the top, the two numbers on the bottom, or on either side around the edge. And sometimes that makes the math a lot easier than the math we have here. All right, and the last problem, a person who is six feet tall has a shadow of eight feet at a certain time of day. And at that same time, you measure the shadow of a building to be 84 feet. So how tall is the building gonna be? So to set up our proportion, we want to do the height and then the shadow. All right, so the person, let's do the person. The person is six feet tall and their shadow is eight. If we set that equal to, we don't know the height of the building, but we do know that the shadow is 84. And then we can cross multiply eight times X, eight X equals six times 84 or 504. Divide both sides by eight and you're gonna get X equals 63 so the building is going to be 63 feet tall thanks for watching if you have any comments on this video or suggestions for future videos just comment below uh, if you'd like to subscribe you can do so right over here and i've got another suggestion for you to watch right here thank you and come back again soon